Welcome to this third edition of In Your Community. Today we take the show on the road to the 90th annual Dearborn Memorial Day Festival. Later on, we talk with an actual Holocaust survivor. Coming up on In Your Community. We're out here in Dearborn for the official kickoff of summer, the uh, 2014 Memorial Day Parade out here in Dearborn. As you can see, several hundred people are already out here lining the route of the parade, which is about to start uh, pretty soon. It's coming down right about now. How many years have you been coming to this parade? Actually, all my life. Uh, my sister was in the Woodworth Band, and uh, now my daughter's in the Dearborn High Band, and we've been coming here for a long time. How many years have you guys been coming? Uh, this is our first. first. Yeah. Wow, awesome. Um, are you guys having a good time so far? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Are you excited to see all the floats in the parade? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Chief, how important is this for the city of Dearborn? You know, this is important for the city of Dearborn, but it's really important for America. You know, we take time out to recognize the generations before us that really contributed to our freedom, to our security, and to our safety. Whether it was the uh, World War II generation that I was raised with in the early 50s, people went off to Korea, others went to that hellhole called Vietnam, and then most lately, you know, Desert Storm and... Uh, uh, Afghanistan, you know, we have a, a great deal to, uh, to be thankful for today. And it, it's good to come out here and show people on this 90th year that we, we appreciate the great contributions of all these Americans. Okay, with the huge presence of um, the Dearborn Police in the parade, how important is it that we maintain funding in the police department in Dearborn? Oh, yeah, you know, it's important to maintain funding. And my job is to make sure that we're secure 365 days a year. And today's just one more day. But... Clearly here, the uh, citizens in Dearborn support their uh, great service that they get, and they uh, pass millages, and they have a right to demand the great service that they get. And uh, so it's, it's great to have that kind of support from the community. Mayor, how important is this parade for the city of Dearborn? Well, it's, it's really um, very important because Dearborn has the longest running, 90 years consecutive, un uninterrupted, for parades and one of the largest in the state. So we really set the pace and, and really create an environment here where we always acknowledge and remember all of our veterans. Okay, um, with City Hall moving in the coming years, what's going to happen to this parade? Oh, the parade will continue. And, and actually, when we were repaving Michigan Avenue, we moved the parade temporarily. So we'll, we'll route it a different way. My expectation is probably we'll start it one year here at Schaefer and go down to the, uh, to the city central and then go one year from West Dearborn and, and take the same route, or opposite route. So we'll have it, it'll still be there. We're putting a veterans plaza in by the new city hall, so it'll be a, a good gathering spot for the same event. This year at the 90th annual parade, several veteran groups showed up to march along the parade route. This was one of Dearborn's most successful parade, featuring hundreds of groups mar marching along the route and thousands lining Michigan Avenue in attendance. This year's route started at the Henry Ford Centennial Library and proceeded down Michigan Avenue to City Hall. After this year's parade, a memorial to World War II veterans took place and included guests such as the mayor and Senator Debbie Stabenow. The parade is one of the biggest events the city hosts each year that draws several big guests from all over the state. This year's guests such as Wayne County Executive Robert Facano, U.S. Rep. John Dingell, Senator Debbie Stabenow, Dearborn's Mayor Jack O'Reilly, Police Chief Ron Haddad, and State Rep. Georgia Draney. Dearborn City Hall will be moving in the future, but the mayor tells us the parade will continue, just down a different route, down Michigan Avenue. This year's parade was a great time for all and definitely goes down in Dearborn's history books. Mr. Draney, how important is this parade to the city of Dearborn? Well, first of all, it's tradition. You know, it's 90 years I think we're celebrating this year. And it's always important to recognize the men and women that fought for our country and, and made our country the great country that it is today. So it's great that it's still attended very well. I don't know how many thousands and thousands of people that show up every year, but I'm glad to say that Dearborn is 
recognizing our troops. We're here at the 2014 Memorial Day Parade with Senator Stabenow here with us. Senator Stabenow, how important is this for the city of Dearborn? Well, this is so important, and this is the 90th year. This is the longest running um, Memorial Day Parade in the state. I love it because everyone's involved, every service club, everybody who loves the community, every part of the community, and most importantly, it's about honoring those who have given the ultimate sacrifice so that we have the freedoms that we enjoy every day of the year. All right, and when you're um, in Lansing looking for funding, how important is it that Dearborn plays a role in that? Well, it's very important. You know, I go back and forth to Washington, D.C. every week, and um, when I'm uh, in Washington uh, in the U.S. Senate, I am keeping our veterans um, first and foremost in mind and uh, making sure that I'm working with the mayor all the time on the federal funding that we need. But right now, uh, my main focus is on veterans health care and mental health care. I was just successful in getting a bipartisan effort passed that's going to help our veterans coming home that have uh, serious mental health issues because we have many people coming home from the battlefield but 22 veterans are actually committing suicide every day when they come home. So we have a lot of support we need to give them. It's a tough transition. We need to support them being able to go back to school, getting a job, and support their families as well. So we're honoring those today who have had the given us the ultimate sacrifice, but we have people that are coming back and involved in making a sacrifice every single day. The Memorial Day Parade was such a great event for the community. Coming up next, we have an actual interview with a Holocaust survivor. Up next on In Your Community. We're in your community this week, I'm Trevor Renner, and here with us right now, we have Mr. Martin Lowenberg, a survivor of the Holocaust. So Mr. Lowenberg, how many years were you in the, the concentration camp? I was uh, four years in the concentration camp. Yes. yes. All right. Um, uh, Ghetto and concentration camp is about this. Did you fear for your life at any point? Well, uh, I would say almost, um, almost constantly, yes. Okay. Um, was there anything while you were in the concentration camp that you held on to, maybe as a ray of hope or something that gave you inspiration to look forward to the future, to hopefully get out of that situation one day? Well, as long as a person lives, uh, you certainly try to hold on to life itself and... Uh, when, when your uh, life is in danger, naturally you uh, uh, will never lose hope, and we uh, th this is something we uh, always try to uh, uh, try to hold on to. And then, of course, uh, um, hope is a word uh, that it goes uh, it stays with us from the time that we are born until the time we die. Tell us what it was like in the camp. Well, um, the day started at uh, four fifteen in the morning, and uh, right right after that, we um, uh, had to go out immediately out of the barracks and stay for a roll call, and uh, we we stood and, uh, for. Uh, sometimes even as long as an hour and a half until the commander of, uh, of the camp or his assistant came and then they were counting us to make sure that uh, everybody is still there even though they, wouldn't, uh, they were going to destroy us um, and that was their aim. We still stood there uh, until uh, we were finished and they came with the food and after that we uh, there were trucks and all kinds of uh, um, mode of uh, transportation that took us to work, and of course we did all all kinds of work okay. that we had to do. What do you remember most about the camp? Anything specifically? Um, what I what I remember mostly is the um, the agony, the hunger, the um, um, because that we constantly were with, and of course uh, the other thing is what we have lost. Okay, um, did you ever keep like a diary or a book of anything? There was no way Nothing? of, no there way. was no way of keeping anything. Okay. Um, when you were thinking of uh, an Anne, Anne Frank and so forth, uh, it was, uh, I don't know how she could have kept it, but we, um, uh, 
we, the only thing that we had on us um, was just um, nothing, nothing, on our, our clothing, and that was it. There was not even a hanky or uh, anything like that. Okay. Um, can you tell us about the day you were liberated and freed? Um, we, d we didn't even realize um, when, when you say liberated, because we were um, uh, taken away. We were taken away like uh, normally, um, except the trucks uh, that we were in had a red cross uh, on the outside, but that didn't mean anything because they were constantly lying to us and they could paint the red cross on anything that they wanted to. So, and that's when they took, a, uh, took us away. Okay, how old were you when you first went into the camp for the first time? Uh, I was 13. 13, okay. Yes. Um, and well, I was 17 when I was uh, liberated. Okay, what was the hardest thing you had to do in the camp? The hardest thing was uh, every day was work. Uh, okay. Very heavy type of work. Okay. Uh, yes. Can you tell us about your family? About my family? Um, um, my family was a uh, decent uh, uh, German family who uh, um, um, grew up in Germany, who only spoke German. And we only had German friends and Jewish friends, and uh, that um, we had a good life and a decent life in Germany. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lohenberg. Um, thank you so much for this weekend in your community. I'm Trevor Rennett. Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of In Your Community. I'm your host, Trevor Renner. Remember, there's always something happening in your community. Have a great day.